Um, yes. Uh, Selectman Hogan will not be at the next couple of meetings. From my understanding, he's uh, just on, under the weather. Thank you, Jimmy. Would you like to? <laughs> He's, he's under the weather. He'll be uh, he'll be off for the next couple of meetings, so it'll just be the four of us for right now. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First up, we had uh, the town clerk here, but I don't see her yet. So I would ask if uh, we could go to uh, item number two ninety six, uh, state house update. Um, well, uh, we have uh, Representative Gordon and Senator Friedman here to update the board on some of the initiatives they've been working on on behalf. On our behalf, up at the State House, uh, I know that Senator Friedman has another meeting at seven o'clock, and I know that Representative Gordon has an important engagement uh, supporting Northeastern this evening at the Bean Pod. So, uh, thank you both for joining us tonight. Thank you, thank thank you. for having us. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. <laughs> well, we just want to say hi, and the purpose of this meeting was to let you know that we're here and that. We'd like to touch base every so often with our with our towns. You see us, we see you. If there's anything you want us to know about, um, anything that's kind of hot or on your mind, you know, we want to make ourselves available. Um, so we thought we'd just talk about a couple of things really briefly, and um, and then anything you have uh, be great to hear. Okay. Yeah. So and again, thank you very much for uh, inviting us again to speak. Um, and it's an important opportunity for us to talk to you and also for the folks at home uh, and behind us here um, to get the information as to what we're doing. And, and we want to talk about what we're doing um, as it relates to Burlington. So I think one of the most significant things that we've been doing in the State House is working to support our life sciences industry, especially as it affects us here in Burlington. I think you know because um, Selectman Priest and um, Selectman Runyon were there uh, about a couple of months ago. We had a hearing of the Joint Committee on Economic Development and Emerging Technologies here in Burlington at Northeastern, and we took testimony from uh, Kristen Kasner, our Planning Director, from Mike Keneally, our uh, Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, from Travis McCready of Mass Life Sciences and Bob Coughlin of Mass Bio. We took a tour of Northeastern and we took a tour of Millipore and we heard from a number of businesses and other entities. Bottom line is that first of all, in Massachusetts we're already doing a lot to, uh, to address this industry. It's important to Burlington, it's important to the surrounding communities. It's essentially the economic lifeblood and the generator, economic generator of what brings businesses and people here uh, to this part of Massachusetts and we're really seen as um, not, not necessarily just an alternative to, Ken to Kendall Square, but as part of Kendall Square, which is to say we're not that far away, and so a lot of the businesses that uh, are coming from other states or other countries see us as part of that Kendall Square area when they talk, except that the rents are lower. So what we're doing now is from, from that hearing, um, what, you know, what can we do? What have we done as a takeaway? And what we've done is I've met with Kristen Kasner. I've met with Michelle uh, Tentacolis, uh, our new economic development director, who's doing a great job uh, for us already. And um, I've presented a few plans that will be, uh, that we believe will be included in the economic development bill that we're putting together. Uh, in the legislature. And one thing I'm really interested in doing is creating a state fund that municipalities can tap into as a matching fund program because one of the challenges that we have here is that um, we have office space that is becoming unused because there is not as much of a need for that as there once was. And it can be re retrofit to this new industry, but it takes money. And in many cases, it's got to be done before leases are signed. So where is that money going to come from? And, the municipalities are being looked to to get these businesses, these buildings ready so they can become uh, tax, uh, be put on the tax rolls. What we can do through this type of a program is that if a municipality identifies a building that they want to um, help a developer um, one way or another to get this retrofit and ready for this, um, they can apply to the state and we can become partners with the municipalities such as Burlington to get this done. Um, <coughs> Other things such as the grant that we've been able to use here in Burlington, it's uh, that and other other ways um, we find that we can work as partners to support this industry, um, which has become crucial. You know, and, and you, as you know, uh, town meeting 
just recently passed the uh, the uh, uh, the bill that uh, the, the warrant article that's going to help with this industry as well. Another thing that's coming up is a transportation revenue bill. Um, probably in the next few weeks, we're going to be addressing the traffic as much as the life sciences has, is a benefit to us. Uh, when businesses and people look to move to our area, what brings them here are the opportunities for, you know, for our, within our economy for these jobs, for schooling and things like that. But what frustrates them is the traffic. What frustrates them is the housing. So we've got to continue to look at tra at traffic, and you know, we've been able to do that. We expanded 128 at exit uh, 32 recently, but now we've got to really look at at doing something to 128 at 93 because we in Burlington still get caught in that traffic, even though it starts in Woburn. It's our problem too. So this new bill is taking a look at that, um, you know, in various ways. Uh, we also have a, a couple of amendments that we're going to be filing. One is going to address noise barriers. Um, the senator has been working on that. Senator Donnelly was, has been working on that, and, and the senator has worked on that both in his office and individually. And it's so hard for us to be able to break through on, on, on a, what's essentially a federal project, but we manage it. But we're looking at new ways to look at the barriers on 128. This is for that the neighborhood at Wedgemere and Windmere. I mean. Uh, in that area, my my aide Cody Case lives in that neighborhood, and sometimes I pick him up. and In the winter, like now, where the leaves are down, I mean, they're they're right on the highway, and so we're um, looking at creating new a way to get through to that problem. Um, budget is coming up, and uh, been working with, we've been working on the House side. I've been working with Melissa, and I know that on the Senate side too, um, to look for ways that we can support continue to support Burlington. Over to the center. Thank you. Um, so thank you. Um, so we've, in the last couple months, have been working on um, a couple things. Definitely the transportation bill, and I think that's going that will come to the house, and then it will come to us. Um, and um, I know there's lots of interest in possible uh, earmarks and um, things that the legislators can do for their own communities. But I think one of the things we want to remember is that it's a district and, and statewide problem. And so we want to make sure that we're kind of moving the whole conversation uh, to a solution. Because um, if we start putting in different, uh, you know, individual um, earmarks, we got to worry that, you know, if we let X town do that, what's it going to do to Burlington, say? What, what, you know, how is the traffic going to be dealt with? So that's something that we all have to look at, and we want to make sure that this is a really comprehensive um, solution. I think it's mostly going to deal with revenue um, and trying to get more revenue into the system, um, both for public transportation and infrastructure. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, you all know that the Student Opportunity Act was signed into law, um, which, is, which changes the um, Chapter 70 fundi funding significantly. And um, I know that um, one thing of interest to Burlington may be that we've increased money for the um, School Building Authority. Um, so that will allow us to get more projects on, uh, onto their calendar. Um, and I think the other piece that um, I think is of interest to you is the circuit breaker and how the changes to the circuit breaker. So now instead of getting, um, you know, before you are eligible for the circuit breaker, um, having to uh, reach four times um, your uh, average student costs, um, you can now, it's 40, 48,000 is the cap. Once you reach forty-eight thousand dollars of you know of, of local funds, then the circuit breaker will kick in and you'll be eligible for seventy-five percent above that. What's really um, important about that as well is that we've now included transportation. So transportation was never included um, in those in that um, funding, and now it is. So it it, it goes towards that forty-eight thousand dollars. I think that helps. Towns like Burlington and other towns in my district uh, quite a bit because those transportation costs are, have been huge. Um, and then the other piece that we are, have been working on and will continue to work on is health care. Um, the Senate did a major pharmaceutical bill um, which uh, addressed the very high cost of pharmaceuticals, gave the state more oversight in, um, in negotiating with pharmaceutical companies. It also capped um, insulin 
out-of-pocket costs uh, for everybody um, so that um, some of those, those costs for people will come down and they will be able to actually afford their insulin. Um, the other piece that we um, are doing this week is a mental health bill, um, and that will be looking at, I think, for um, what's important about that is there's a behavioral pipeline in that bill. There's a mental, there's a mental health parity piece, which uh, is very strongly enforces the parity of the state and federal parity laws, because we are seeing that that's not happening um, with insurers. Um, there's a telehealth piece for schools, pilot program for schools, um, to deliver um, uh, some mental health services. And then there's um, some focus on the pipeline, getting more people into um, positions of uh, caretakers and providers because what we're seeing is that there's just not enough, there's not enough people um, out there doing the work that we need to do, um, especially for children. Um, so I think those are the, oh, we will be very soon doing a, another piece of, of health care in the Senate, which will be um, out of network surprise billing, uh, telemedicine, and scope of practice. So increasing the scope of practice so that um, providers can work to the full extent of their license. And this is nurse practitioners, advanced psychiatric nurses, podiatrists, um, CNAs, I mean, there's a whole, uh, social workers, whole group of providers that um, currently are prohibited from actually delivering care that they have, uh, that they have education and expertise to do. So we'll be looking at those pieces too. Um, and then we will be also taking up the economic um, uh, development bill, because we always do. Hmm. So that's a kind of quick wrap up of where we are. Okay, thank you very much. So what I, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> what I usually do is I let them go first, and then if they happen to ask my questions, that's great. If they don't, then I'll ask. So, Michael, start off tonight after that uh, sip of water. Yes, so uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Senator and, and Representative Gordon, for uh, being here tonight. I'm glad you, you both talked about transportation. I'm glad to see that transportation is high on your priority list because I'm certain that everybody at this table and everybody in attendance uh, here's about traffic on a regular basis here. Um, you, 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 Cindy, you touched on health care a little bit and some, some reforms and, and so on that you, you hope to, and I know that's a, a difficult subject to, to actually accomplish anything. But there, there's one area, and I've expressed my concerns to Ken in the past, and, and that's with the, the assisted living industry. The entire industry, in, in, in my opinion, um, uh, is in need of some, some additional oversight or some revisions, and so I would hope that you would consider um, that in, in future legislation. Yeah, I know that this is something that we've been working on. I know that a report has just come out on long-term assisted living, um, you know, um, nursing homes and, um, and issues around assisted living, so we will be, a, we will be tackling it. Um, there was some requirement for some studies so that we understood what was actually going on in the industry. And I know I just got something back, I think, on Friday that I saw one of the reports come out. So thank you for bringing that up. And that's a real, um, really important issue for a lot of people. Yeah, the Senator has really been out front um, in her position in that branch on these issues. And we've been working on these together. So, uh, you know, absolutely. Good, good, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ken, I'll direct this to you because you brought it up. You mentioned the life sciences, and we've heard that it's the next big wave and the next big business. Um, I'm not even sure if you can answer this, but as far as like the education piece of it and the internships, are we doing enough, or how, what can we do as a town, or what can the state do to encourage uh, internships, even at the high school level, to if this is the next big, big thing, people need to be trained for the next big thing. It's actually the current big thing and the next big thing. It's here. And so, yeah, so the state program that we currently have provides intern, op, internship opportunities. And I know I've met with um, Superintendent Conti, and we've talked about this, and Burlington does off, offer opportunities to its students to get involved in this industry, and they have had um, programs at, um, at Millipore to bring students out there. And, and this is a, 
a community that's provided a, a great opportunity, um, including an opportunity for girls, because it's an industry. It's a, it's a, I'm sorry, a, a field where it's been dominated by boys you know, in the high schools, in the middle schools, and we've really reached out on the state level, but also the town level, to make sure that girls see that these opportunities are there, and it may, um, and, and it has been attracting uh, a more diverse group of people um, statewide into it. So, yeah, these internships are, are open to and assisted, assistance is given to the businesses so that they're hiring the interns, the schools so that they're offering it, and you've had some great partners going on right here locally. So, so my, are we doing enough or from the town side? Or are we lacking or could we? I think do you're doing this, I honestly think you're doing as much as, as, as anyone is. Um, Eric Conti is, is on top of this. It's a priority for him. And so to the extent that we can fill more slots to do that, I'm sure we can, right? I'm sure we always can. But it's nothing that's being, um, it, it, there's attention that's being paid to this um, constantly. So I'm really impressed with what's going on here in Burlington with, with respect to life sciences. Good. Good. Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Senator Representative, thank you both very much for coming, taking the time out uh, to come speak with us. Um, <clears throat> having attended the hearing, the joint hearing, um, it was absolutely incredible. And, you know, I might pontificate for a moment. Uh, but, I mean, the, the growth in the life scientist space is absolutely astronomical. And I think for us as a community, there's a great opportunity in terms of diversifying our economy um, and changing some unused office space to space that can be utilized while keeping traffic lower. Um, you know, and, and we're seeing that with Millipore, right? There's off-cycle, um, you know, engineering happening, R&D happening, uh, which is huge. Um, Jim, to your point, um, I think that as a town, we have to create as much opportunity for not just businesses, but I think the life sciences as a, an industry. Uh, I know Northeastern, they had said that, that one of their big things is, is incubation of, you know, uh, kids who are going through undergrad and grad programs who then create small startups and then allowing those startups to, to flourish in their space and then hopefully find a way to keep them in town, um, which is huge. You know, it's, it's creating a whole life cycle of business within this, this vertical. Um, a big concern of mine that always becomes transportation and traffic. Um, you know, because we're not getting any smaller um, and people aren't suddenly just going to give up their cars. Um, you know, so I think it's great that from a highway perspective, we're finding ways to, you know, um, relieve bottleneck problems. Um, but I know that um, just making roads wider only really invites more traffic. And, I think, and we all know this, right? Um, but, you know, as a community, we need to find ways um, not to expand roads, but to, you know, maybe create uh, opportunities for people to uh, ditch their cars or, um, uh, you know, create turn lanes in certain areas to create, you know, ease of flow. Um, I had attended the Mass Municipal Association conference uh, two weeks ago, a week ago, I forget. The days blur together. Um, and I attended a, a, a transportation uh, workshop and uh, several communities, um, Everett and I think it was Brighton and one other had talked about um, electric scooter uh, programs that they were testing uh, that were going really well in terms of a pilot program, um, as well as um, uh, bike programs. Um, so I'm, I'm actually looking, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the data coming out of those pilot programs because I think in a community where we do have so much so many people here for business reasons to have ways for them to come park their car and then scooter around town or bike around town um, might help day congestion, which is really where we see a lot of our congestion as a community. Um, so, you know, I'm just kind of speaking out loud on, on the things you spoke about, and I think it's great from a state level that we're, we're looking at these things. Um, drilling way down to the mental health bill, I do have a question. Um, would the bill be focused on state level assistance or funding or both? 
it's really or do you not know? both. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a, it's a, so yes and yes and, sort and of. maybe sort of. <laughs> I mean, it, it, when we're talking about funding, what we're talking about is access to treatment, and. Um, and how do you get that access? And so much of access is about cost. Not only about cost, but about rates, how much we pay people to do this work. And we are in a really serious crisis because for years we have not paid um, really fair wages for people doing mental health treatment. And, and so many, many people have left the system. They just won't take insurance or they, um, or they, or they just won't do the work. Right. So, what this bill does is it starts to address that issue, okay? Um, holding the, a big part of this bill is, is parity and parity between mental health and, and um, uh, med surge, medical and surgical. And while it may not be immediately apparent, um, one of the ways you get to fixing those costs is through looking at parity because it is the law of the land, both federally and state, that we have parity between those two um, disciplines. Right. And um, w this bill makes this very transparent. So we are asking insurance companies and DOI to give us very specific information about how they're meeting uh, the parity laws. That, we believe, will help um, address some of the rates. It will also help address access because right now the provider networks, the networks that you all go online to find a provider for treatment, those provider networks are woefully, woefully inadequate for behavioral health. That's against the law. You need to have a adequate network. Well, looking at parity and looking specifically at those networks, we will now be able to hold the insurance company accountable for making sure that the networks are adequate. That means they're going to have to start either making it easier to be in the network and or they're going to have to raise their rates. Um, there also is a piece that directly has rates in this bill, which requires that rates for um, uh, mental health providers that are doing similar work to um, providers in primary care get paid no less. And you can't bring the rates down for the, for the uh, primary care providers to meet the requirement. So there's different ways that we're going around it. I would, you know, I would want to say 50% of your of healthcare dollars needs to go into primary care and behavioral health, and it can't be fee for service. It's got to be, you know, an, a, an accountable care, a value-based system. We're not quite there yet. So, but this is the first step. So, I hope that answers the question. In, but it's a kind of, you know, yeah. we have to get it at a number of different ways. Right. In, in part, it answers, it answers my question. I understand it's, it's one of those things where you start pulling the thread and all of a sudden you see, you know, what you're unraveling. Um, I ask mostly because from a, from a town perspective, um, you know, we have boots on the ground, right? We have youth and family services here in town. We have, uh, the police department has staff, um, you know, that, that deals with a lot of at-risk at -risk folks. Um, and what I don't want to have happen is I don't, I don't want us as, as a municipality to be fighting the state in terms of how we or where we send people for programming, um, as well as making sure we capture folks who aren't being referenced to a physician or to a mental health clinician, okay. um, you know, because they're not going to identify themselves. Um, and so I, I want to make sure that we, we we give them an opportunity to come to us, and then we can work with the state to get them to where they need to be. So there's two. There's two <coughs> programs. Uh, first of all, in the uh, Student Opportunity Act, uh, in the foundation budget, more uh, emphasis is put on guidance counselors and health services. So, in other words, they count. We've, re we've increased their, their, for lack of a better word, value, and the, 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 um, that goes towards um, what it what it will take to educate a child. So that raises that foundation budget because we're saying no. This this is what this costs to to provide the service. The second thing that we've been doing and um, is that there we have a, we've been running a pilot and um, um, Ken is on the committee. But the pilot is a restoration center pilot, and what it is designed to do is to design and develop a place where um, first responders or family or whoever 
can take somebody who's in the midst of a substance use um, disorder occurrence or a mental health um, episode can take them to a place where it is not an emergency room, it's not a jail cell, it, no one's making you go, but can take them where they would be triaged, where somebody would be there, could do an evaluation, help understand what they needed, and then move them into that, move that in direction right away. So right now there is no continuity between the system. You go to the ED, police take you to the, to the emergency department, you're out in, you know, you're out in 24 hours at the most, right? Because right. they don't know what to do with you. So, um, so we are working on that particular piece in Middlesex County to see if we can provide just what you're talking about, which is a real place to help those people who can't get treatment but end up cycling in and out of emergency rooms or are interacting with the police all the time because of their illness. That's why they're there, right. not because they're criminal. So we've been, we've been um, doing, uh, working on that. And then finally, the mental health bill has in it a requirement that people who come into an ED get a mental health evaluation right away. So no more of this, are you okay? And then see you later, because the emergency department or the hospital doesn't have a behavioral health specialist to help them. So right. th those are some of the things that we're doing. That's excellent. Thank you for elaborating. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Priest, I just want to come back to what you said. We're talking about traffic in your first comment and question. Yes. We're talking about our economy and traffic. One of the things that you've done here and one of the things that we're trying to do on the state that's encouraging communities to do what Burlington has done is that through zoning and town meeting, you've created the opportunity to have apartments that have uh, been that are under construction now in some of these what we call mixed use areas where people can work and live, and those are people that can in fact bike to work. Right. Those are people because it's difficult to get people coming from a different town or city into Burlington to leave their car because where do you leave it? Where are they going to park it? But really, are they going to are they going to do that and then come the last mile in? I think realistically, like you said, it'll be hard to get that kind of a person out of their car. But if you provide an opportunity for them to live within a mile or so of when they work, the traffic actually comes down. Um, and, we've, and we have this opportunity that we've been doing. When you talk about adding a lane to the highway, when I mentioned that, I think you see what we did at exit 32 and 128, mm -hmm. we didn't just add the lane, we actually striped it so right. that we have one lane going to, to Lowell because that traffic essentially was in the way of of the traffic going to Middlesex Turnpike, and now they have their own dedicated lane, and the Burlington traffic can can scoot by. Absolutely. So I think that's there was a low cost way of addressing that that we did absolutely, and that's what we're trying to do is find efficient ways to, to deal with the traffic rather than something that may be expensive but may be inefficient. Right. Thank you. When, sure. when the center says that I'm on the committee that we've been looking at this restoration center, actually this, the center uh, is too. Uh, we're both on that, and, and she's, in fact, the de facto co-chair, so we've been working hard on this issue. Awesome. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> As I said, I asked all the questions. I checked everything off and it went down. It was nice to hear about the health care, the traffic. Um, I'm glad you're working on the health care bill. I think that's going to be a big proposal for the state. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that can't afford a lot of different things. Um, you know, the... the home daycare, uh, health care, that's, that's really hot right now. Uh, the traffic issue in town with the life science buildings, I think that has come a long way with Burlington, but people not working. I'm going to make this go to like 7 o'clock, so you're going to miss that game. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kind of throw it out there. But no, seriously, I really do appreciate you guys coming in tonight and uh, talking about this, all the things going on in town and the state for us. So truly appreciate it and thank you. Like Meridia, and when you mentioned the employment in life sciences, that's for people at all different levels yes. of life sciences, not just the scientists. Which is no, no, scientists. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think we take it for granted that we talk about life science so much that we know what it means, and right. probably the general public is thinking, like, how many scientists are there in Burlington <laughs> right now? You know? And life science, is a, has a, that's another whole long subject to talk about, but you're right. It's a life science building. It's not yeah. scientists. You're no. right. People yeah. watching this should understand right. how, how much good you've done, Tom Meeting has done, and that we yeah. try to contribute to as well. One big happy family, my friend. There you go. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move back to... Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Warfield is here to, to have the board vote the warrant for the presidential primary. 
Sorry, Amy, you were a few minutes late. I know. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I'm trying to run between two different things at once. <laughs> I haven't gotten very good at that job yet. Um, yeah, so um, <coughs> it comes around that I need to have the Board of Selectmen uh, sign the warrant for the uh, March 3rd election, uh, the presidential preference election. Um, that we have, uh, we will have four different ballots. We have a Republican, a Democrat, um, Green Party, and Libertarian parties that um, have items on their um, parties for um, pretty much there are just four offices in this um, on all these ballots. Uh, one is for presidential candidate, the other is for uh, state committee man and state committee woman for the party, and then the town committees for that particular party. Um, that election is going to be um, March 3rd. Um, the polls will be open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. And in addition to that, we will also have, um, by state um, requirement, we will have early voting uh, the week prior. Um, so starting on February 24th, through, through February 28th, we will do early voting here in this room from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And then on Wednesday, we will extend um, till 7 p.m. when the um, town hall is open. So that's what's coming up for the March 3rd election. Thank motion, you. Motion to approve the warrant. Second. Mr. Chairman. In other words, <laughs> thank you. You <laughs> really don't need me tonight, do you? <laughs> Okay, motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? You got it, Betty. All well set. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Sure, that's fine. Good sign. Thank you. Paul, will you sign that? You want to move right along to? Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next up, uh, we have invited the trustees who manage the Mary Cummings Park on behalf of the City of Boston uh, to update the board and the community on some exciting improvements. Uh, that they are doing over at the park. Uh, trustees have fairly recently taken over management of this property, uh, but they have a substantial amount of experience in, in managing similar properties all over the state. So if they're here right now, that will be great. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Catherine. Good evening. How are you? Go right ahead. <laughs> Shut up, Beth. Sorry. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, good evening. I'm Catherine McDonald. I'm director of the Stevens Coolidge portfolio of properties, which includes Mary Cummings Park. And with me is Jeremy Dick, who is our stewardship manager and actually the person guiding our project through, which we're very excited to be able to provide beautiful open space. The reason I brought, uh, sent you some slides is because this is a park that you need to experience its beauty. Those photos are from John Sachs, who's done a lot of photo photography of the park. Um, so we are, Mary Cummings Park is a 209 acre park in Burlington and Woburn, which is owned by the city of Boston. And we are currently managing under a license agreement while a formal uh, management contract is completed with the city. That is something that we're working on. Uh, the park includes a variety of natural habitats, including wetlands, fields, forests, and thickets. Um, in the second slide, you see the park's benefactor, Mary Cummings, who really, her goal uh, was to ensure the park was forever a public pleasure ground, as she put it. And that's exactly what the trustees is here to do. On the third slide, I um, began to outline the process that we've gone through when we're in the midst of. Uh, we started off in June with some community outreach in the town offering forums for people to come forward and talk about what was important to them. And uh, we came up with four prior priorities to establish. Uh, one was to create a welcoming place for visitors to enjoy, to improve trail conditions and maintenance of the park, which has really been forgotten a little bit and to improve parking facilities and access, especially for people with disabilities, and also to improve the ecology of the site. Um, 
from that point, we designed a master plan, which we published in September, and I brought a couple of copies for you to leave behind. And from June to February, we've been doing studies about the wetlands, about the borings necessary to put in uh, the boardwalk to the uh, marsh. And um, in January, we've completed our designs. Uh, we are now in the midst of permitting uh, from January through February. We've been at the Conservation Commission, and our RDA is complete. On uh, February 13th, we will be before them for our NOI, which is great. Um, on the planning board side of things, um, our site plan review <coughs> meeting is um, February 20th. Uh, we also need to speak to the tree warden about some trees that we would like to remove along Blanchard, which are really in poor condition, and um, we need better access on that area for the site. Um, our bid packages, this is a state project. Um, while it's owned by the city of Boston, we're going through a park grant, which is a state grant, and so all our bids will be public, and that process will be out in March. Construction, um, April and June. We have a June 1 deadline with the park grant. So, um, and we hope that you'll be able to enjoy the park this summer. And in October, we'll be doing an opening celebration. And of course, you'll all be invited to. Um, so I also included um, in your packet, if you skip to slide <coughs> five, a schematic of the parking picnic and pollinator meadow. So the key improvements we're doing here are number one, access, having a parking, um, you can see that at the top of the schematic, um, adding a new parking lot. There's probably about 20 parking spaces here. It'll be in one driveway, out the other driveway. There'll also be a bike rack for bike transportation, which we certainly encourage. Um, we will be uh, doing a lot of restoration of trails, um, new trails as well as uh, re rehabilitation of trails. Um, if you look down to that circle that looks like it has trees in it, um, that is a picnic lawn that we'll be developing. And the yellow area is our pollinator meadows that we'll be planting. And um, moving to slide six, you'll also see the boardwalk um, that will go about 250 feet into the marsh area. And this has been um, sponsored by Millipore, which we're very grateful to them. And this is a great opportunity for school children to go into that marsh and, and learn and study the ecology of the marshland. On slide seven, um, you'll see our, our draft uh, trail map. But one of the things I want to point out on this is at the very top, there is a new accessible trail, and that forms a loop which also extends to the Burlington Recreation area and loops around the soccer field, which that exists right now, and of course that's your property, but we felt it was great to include that to give people a longer walk if they would like that. Um, also, you'll be able to still see the flyers who will be in their area, the, um, the model airplane flyers, hikes, backpacking, snowshoeing, snow cross-country skiing, really offers a wonderful area for not only the people of Burlington, but also the people that work in Burlington. There's a lot of people that do, of course. Uh, bird watching and various habitats. Um, this, this park also, and part of our ethic with properties, is to invite volunteers in. And, you know, the people that walk there, if they volunteer there, they have ownership. And parks, as you know, need continuous care and love and to have volunteers, both corporate volunteers and volunteers from the community to step forward and to help us with trail upkeep and, of course, invasives, which are, you know, always a problem. And I will say the major uh, construction activity here is the removal of invasives. Um, it's, they've really strangled the park, and our goal is to open this up, have a wonderful center field, and also um, pollinator meadow and picnic area for people to enjoy. And that's what we're doing. 
<laughs> Any Fantastic. questions? Oh, I'm sure there's going to be a couple questions. Uh, I saw Jimmy right now. Oh, he's writing a novel over here, but that's okay. So why don't you go first? Okay, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Um, is, is this open year-round? Yes. Snow removal. Who's going to be responsible for snow removal, the parking lot, the trails? Just in the parking lot. Just in the parking lot. Who's going to yeah. do? No trails. Trails right. Who's going to do that? Trails have snow. No, who's going to do the parking lot? The trustees. The trustees? Yeah. Right. Um, and then I noticed you have the picnic table area. I'm, I'm only asking this because... Families are going to go there, facilities, photo parties, or anything like that? Not in the plans now. And we also have an ethic of leave no trace. You bring in, you take it out. And so we would also not be having rubbish barrels for picnics. Um, that is pretty similar to all of our properties, is where we um, encourage people to go and enjoy them, but they also need <coughs> to bring um, any, any trash that they brought in out. If you if that becomes an issue, like, we would address it. All right. After all that writing, that's all you got? That's it. <laughs> the rest of it's all about you. The rest was about me. Yeah. <laughs> Michael. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for, for being here tonight and updating us. Uh, that is a wonderful parcel. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see you're, uh, you're hoping to increase access to that area because I think I think people will utilize it if if uh, if you're able to get that uh, the grant money over there. So um, uh, we cer I, I certainly support your efforts and anything um, I could do to to help you in that process. Uh, feel free. Well, hope to see you at the opening in October. Okay, keep us posted. Thank you. Mr. Priest, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you both for being here. Um, I was writing questions as you were speaking, and I was checking off them because you were answering them as as. <laughs> You were going, so uh, thank you for the, um, the thorough breakdown, um, and thank you both for being here. Um, I think, you know, one of the most difficult things about beautiful pieces of land is making sure that there's access to them, and so the fact that you're coming in and providing that access for folks to be able to move around the space, um, utilize it in a couple different ways, have parking, um, you know, is, is phenomenal. And I like to think that, you know, it might, it might not even be true, uh, that we're a fairly unique community in that we uh, have a burgeoning, uh, you know, economy, you know, with the mall and all the businesses that are here in town, but we also have a great deal of green space and, you know, walkable wooded areas and, you know, this parcel of land uh, that folks can enjoy and, you know, actually get away from uh, their job or their house, which is just down the road. Uh, which is, it, it's fantastic. So um, I echo Selectman Ryan's, uh, you know, sentiment that, you know, whatever you folks need, I'm happy to be of any assistance that I can. Um, I look forward to the opening. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for Thank your you. time. Thank you. So, yep, last but not least, you still get me. <laughs> uh, no, I could be happier. Uh, I, I love these type of areas. Uh, uh, we have, you know, the um, up in Burlington, we have the area up there that we use. Uh, we have a conservation gentleman. Uh, he's sitting right in the back. Mr. Gailey's doing a great job with all our conservation in town. I'm sure if there's any questions that you need to ask him, I'm sure he'd be available for questioning as I'm putting him on the spot right now, but that's okay. Um, I agree with Mike. I couldn't be happier about this. I think it's um, a huge plus for the town of Burlington. Um, and if there's anything we can do to help out, please don't hesitate to get in touch with the office or one of us. And, I'm sure that we can work something out. Everything well, work really, out just fine. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. No, I, I agree with these. These are nice. And if we just keep the ticks down, maybe that might help out. We have to figure that issue out because there's a lot of them around right now. Wear and, tall socks. Well, we haven't, had the, we haven't had the cold weather. And they haven't, well, they're just kind of still there, you know. They are. Yeah, a lot of them, too. But once you widen the trails and get them a little bit better, clear, uh, get in there with the chainsaws and cut them open, I think a lot of them will diverse off into the woods and the fields. Um, but the trail rehab, that will really make an improvement for people. Right. Especially with the ADA accessible trails, there will be a, a good width to them to yeah. keep things at bay, we hope. <laughs> Mr. Kelly's got to laugh at this one. How's your deer herd up there? Pretty good? Pardon? Your deer herd. Deer. Yeah. 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 Quite a few of them up there, huh? Yeah. 
<laughs> like he's back to he's back to laughing. No, I'm not going there. I'm not. Going, I won't go there. See if Austin will allow it. I promise I won't go there. We've already had that discussion. I know. All right, but no, seriously, thank you so much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Good night. thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh Next up, Mr. Chairman, we have a uh, liquor licensing uh, issue. If I could ask a board member to read uh, the posting. Who has that? I'll one? take that one. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held on Monday, February 10th, 2020, at or after 6.30 p.m. at the Burlington Town Hall Main Hearing Room, second floor, 29 Center Street, Burlington, Mass., on the application for an alteration of premises for the all-alcohol license for licensee Tuscan Kitchen Burlington, LLC, doing business as Tuscan Kitchen, for the premises located at 2400 District Avenue in Burlington, Mass., for proposal for an alteration of premise to include converting the casual dining area adjacent to the main entrance to traditional full service and cafe dining, reconfigure, reconfiguration of internal seating, reducing overall patio seating, and for a change of manager. The plans and supporting documentation are available for public inspection in the town administrator's office during business hours, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Wednesday, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The uh, Board of Selectmen public hearing notices are printed in the Burlington Times, Daily Times Chronicle, and may also be downloaded from uh, masspublicnotices.org. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Gentlemen. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, all. Uh, uh, pleasure to be before you tonight in connection with the uh, application as so uh, succinctly read by Mr. Tiggis. Uh, but uh, we're here in connection with a alteration of premises and uh, appointment of general manager application for uh, Tuscan Kitchen. I think everyone's familiar with where Tuscan is. Obviously, it's at uh, the district. Uh, I think it was the first, if not um, uh, the first restaurant within the district. Uh, hard to believe it's celebrating its seventh anniversary uh, already since it opened, but um, we've uh, been very happy about their uh, business here in Burlington, uh, excited to be a part of the community, uh, but they're at a point in time now where they're looking to really just try to refresh the restaurant and respond to uh, some of the current uh, dining trends uh, that are out there to provide the best experience for their customers. So. Uh, fortunately, uh, the food isn't going to be changing at all. Uh, the same high-quality food will, will remain, but I think they're just trying to really focus on uh, modifying the, uh, the, the inner workings and um, uh, the, the, the layout of the premises. So uh, this is just a larger version of the same floor plan that's been submitted uh, that's part of your package. Uh, but basically, there's, there's three elements to the plan that are before you. Uh, one is to really uh, focus on renovating and enhancing the former uh, market space, which is the space that you come in off of that main parking lot. If you recall, there used to be a, a market there where they'd have desserts and, and things of that nature. Uh, so that area was um, uh, modified several years ago, but still, uh, from the restaurant's perspective, isn't functioning to the extent the, the vibrancy that it could. So what they want to be able to do is eliminate the um, high-top dining, lack of a better word, the bar area, which is presently located back in this area here. And it would be ro relocated out to the uh, front portion of the entry when you come in off the, the parking lot. It would be a much more open, uh, vibrant, um, uh, engaging experience for, for diners uh, at that location there. Uh, where, where it is currently, it's kind of a dead end, if you're familiar with it, and uh, they feel like it's just not... Um, uh, as uh, active and uh, engaging as an area as it could be. Uh, the other change would be the outdoor patio dining area, which is uh, shown along this area here. Again, this is Mall Road here, uh, the road coming into the district here. So they're looking to uh, eliminate some of that seating that's out there that really isn't all that uh, utilized. So the area in orange is shown on this plan, and again on the plans that are part of your package show uh, how they're going to be narrowing that, that patio dining seating out there where it would just be uh, 27 seats 
uh, where they would be uh, able to have alcohol service. And then lastly, it's just the remaining interior of the restaurant where they're looking to just uh, refresh and reconfigure the dining. Um, and they would uh, not be looking to increase the total seat count as to what's out there uh, today. The same seat count would remain. It's just a matter of reconfiguring and um, really making it a, a much uh, a more, 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 more fresh uh, experience. So. We do have some, some renderings here in terms of um, you know, kind of the internal floor plan that I could you know, share. I think, I think we got them in our... Oh, you do? Our, okay. Yeah. All right, great. I'm sorry. All right, thanks. Um, but um, that's, uh, that's really it. So be happy to answer any questions or address any comments you have. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm just going to start this one quick. We had a subcommittee meeting myself. Um, <laughs> We went over a bunch of questions that, right, Paul? Yep. Went over a bunch of questions. You probably got to ask the same questions. Um, subcommittee was in favor of it, which was me, basically, so I'm in favor of it. <laughs> Mr. Hogan couldn't make it that day. He was occupied. Um, but we went over the seating. We went over the, 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 the staff, how it was going to work. Uh, we probably had 10 or 12 questions for him. Everything got answered fine. Uh, all I can say is that, like I said, the subcommittee was definitely in favor of this. Uh, it's just basically moving chairs and tables around, building new walls, and moving on from there. And they've been a great tenant in the town of Burlington. Uh, there's been no incidents down there whatsoever on any aspect, so um, I, I couldn't see why we wouldn't allow them to make it even better than what it is. So at that point, I will start with uh, Nick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to just the only change to seating is that we're reducing by 27? Uh, or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we're reducing to 27 on, on the exterior patio. Yeah, the, the exterior patio seating would be reduced down to 27 patio seats. But otherwise, there is a, a zero change to seating. Everything's a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, the total seating count would not increase over what's out there today. Okay. Uh, that helps, yeah. Yeah, no, just, yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I see that it, this gives you the opportunity to throw some more function space in the back here uh, by moving the, the bar front, which I think is great. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see anything that stands out to me as, a, as an issue. I mean, I think it's great that you'll be able to utilize that space that isn't being as utilized now. Um, yeah, I, I see no issues. Mr. Ryan. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There was only there was one item in the in the backup that caught my attention. I don't see it right now. It was from the building inspector. Do you have some current permits or something that are you haven't quite finished up on? Yeah, we had to, so, so you wrapped those up before. Yeah, uh, yeah, we we have successfully wrapped it up, and uh, <coughs> there were some prior permits that didn't have occupancy permits issued. There were some um, prior contractor involved that we needed to clean up some things. Everything has been resolved. I know that uh, the building inspector did communicate that today. I think that uh, uh, it's, okay. it's resolved. So, um, but I think it was just you know, dot and I's crossing teams, as I understand, to make sure that so all the sign-offs were <coughs> provided. Okay, good. And then uh, I guess I would just like to echo Joe's comments that certainly Tuscan's been an outstanding corporate neighbor in town um, for five, six, seven years or so, Veterans Day, um, feed all of the veterans in uh, Burlington and uh, Bedford. It's been very, very successful, and the veterans are, are uh, uh, quite pleased to uh, come down and en enjoy a meal that day. I uh, had no expense, so thank you. Thank you for that. Otherwise, I have no, uh, I have no further questions. Okay, Jimmy, before I go to you, uh, um, really quickly, it was something I was going to touch on at the end of it, but I would like, at, after Jimmy's done to go over that Veterans Day. I think that's an incredible, um, I don't even know what word to use. There's so many out there I could use. It's just incredible what you do for veterans. So at the end of Jimmy's, could you please go over that quickly? So go ahead, James. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know a good portion, a, a decent portion of your business is takeout. Is that being affected? Is that being relocated? or? Most of our takeout has dissipated with the loss of the market a couple of years ago. Um, so we do a little bit of takeout like a regular restaurant would do, call ahead orders basically. Um, we'll have to figure out logistics as far as doing that, but it's, I don't think it's going to affect too much. I really don't, um, similar to any other restaurant. 
Right. No, I'm just curious. So instead of having people walk all the way through, it, you bring it closer to the entrance or exit. It's a lot yeah. easier for, for people. Yeah, I think I, there's different options we could do to look at that. Um, the host stand will probably be located further into the building, so having them walk in, that might be a challenge. But I think we'll be able to work it out. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to echo what's been already said, uh, we, we really appreciate it, everything you do. So I'll leave the rest for you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, before you get going, there's two gentlemen in the back of the room. Uh, I'd like to just acknowledge them. Uh, they were, at, if you guys want to come down here for a second, come on down. Um, they were at the subcommittee meeting also. Um, and introduce yourselves real quick so the TV audience can actually know who you are. Uh, Joe Brenner, uh, Vice President of Operations for Tuscan Brands. And Mario Mancini, the controller for Tuscan Brands. So at the meeting, this, this was the group that I met with, along with Mr. Sagarino. Um, and they were just, I was so impressed by your presentation, what you gave us, um, or gave me and Paul that day, it was incredible. And then when I heard about the, and I didn't even know about the, the veterans, so that's why I wanted to have the four years up here to mention the veterans, tell everybody what you do for the veterans, and whether it's this town or wherever your restaurants are, or wherever the, I don't think it really matters if they're from Burlington or not, right? Uh, no, it doesn't. So, uh, Ten years ago in Salem, New Hampshire, we started serving uh, veterans. It was our first day of operation, and we opened the doors in Salem. Uh, the owner, Joe Farrow, um, saw, you know, wanted to give back to the community, and uh, we fed every, a thousand people that day, uh, family members, uh, veterans and their family members of the Salem community. Um, and that tradition continues as we open other locations. Uh, that's really our out, one of our pillars for the outreach to the community. Um, we do it in Seaport, Portsmouth, and Burlington. And it's been, uh, it's really, um, it's, 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 it's a real moving day for everyone. And everyone volunteers their time that day and uh, gives back to the men and women who serve our country. I was uh, I, I was quite impressed by that, and it's my understanding that the particular manager down there now is trying to beat someone else's record from another store on how many. Might be, yeah. Might be, yeah. might be, might be. Might be a little competitive there. A little bit. No, I think uh, this past year we I think was the best year Burlington had ever done. Yeah. We did a thousand ourselves, um, and we're looking to beat our neighbor up north in Salem next year. Uh, gentlemen, I. I um, I can't thank you enough, so before we move along and take a vote, I just want to say thank you for what you do. Uh, I'll let Mr. Sagarino, do you have anything you would like to add to this? Well, I just want to remind you, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's a public hearing, so if we can ask for the members of the public. But I did, uh, there was once one item of the presentation, uh, access to the restaurant. I know that the area of construction is primarily going to be towards the front door, so if you just want to let the public know, access to the office building, I believe, is the, is the, the goal. Okay, so at this point, uh, I will open it up to the public. If anybody out there has anything they'd like to comment on this in favor or against it, please come forward. And at this point, I'd like to have a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And now I'll take a motion on the... Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve item number 298, approval for alteration of premise, premises. Approval for a change of manager uh, for an all alcohol licensed Tuscan Kitchen, Burlington LLC, doing business as Tuscan Kitchen, 2400 District Ave. Section by Jim, second by Mike. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, against? Opposed? Four in favor, one absent. You're all set. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time helping to move the paperwork around. So thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> 299. Item 299, Mr. Chairman, we have another public hearing uh, for alcohol licensing um, Buffalo Wild Wings. Yes. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah. If you mind introducing yourselves. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, you're going to read this for us. Never sorry. mind. My bad. <laughs> Apologies. This will take but a moment. The Board of Selectmen hereby gives notice that it will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 10th, 2020, at or after 6.40 p.m. at the Town Hall, 29 Center Street, Burlington, Mass., second floor main meeting room to consider the application for a transfer for an annual restaurant all-alcohol beverages license 
from BW Burlington LLC doing business as Buffalo Wild Wings to Blazing Wings Incorporated doing business as Buffalo Wild Wings as allowed per Alcohol Liquors uh, General Law Chapter 138 of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for a property located at 15 South Avenue, Burlington, Massachusetts. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Thank you very much. Gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, My name is Joe yourself. Devlin. I'm an attorney representing Blazing Wings, Inc., which uh, is the applicant before you today. My name is Josh Metzger. I'm the general manager at the store. So, He's also the proposed manager of record for this this new uh, transfer. If it pleases the chair, I can explain, uh, the, summarize the application before you. Absolutely. Uh, I represent Blazing Wings, Inc., which is the national owner of the concept Buffalo Wild Wings. What's operating right now in uh, Burlington is a franchisee uh, operating under the Buffalo Wild Wings concept. Um, the f national owner is purchasing the five lo remaining five locations that are owned by the franchisee here in Massachusetts um, and bringing them back under the ownership of the, uh, the national uh, uh, company. Um, this might sound familiar because I think there's a TGIFs here in, in Burlington and, and there's an attorney that Al DiNapoli is do it. He's been in a couple of the same communities that I've been right before me and someone at Danvers said, oh yeah, there, there was a guy here doing this already. Uh, but uh, it's fairly common in the industry, especially in, in times of you know, prosperous times. Uh, the, uh, the national company you know, has strict specifications and requirements, which the franchise DZs do a great job of doing, uh, following, but it's still easier to control your stores and, and control your brand when you control more of the stores. So that's what's happening here. It involves five in Massachusetts and uh, I think it's double the number, but more locations in Florida. They're trying to time the two together. Um, Florida takes a lot, it's a lot faster. It's about two weeks. Um, practically, what will it have, you know, on the, the uh, location here at 15 South Avenue? None. I mean, they're already running the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise. Um, the employees probably wouldn't even know, but they are telling everybody about it recently. But the members of the general public aren't going to tell the difference. Uh, same menu, same operation, same employees. Just different name on the paycheck, frankly, and different name on the annual fee that we give to Betty every year. Um, in, a, in, a, in one way, having the national company there, they just have more resources. They just got infused with some equity funding in the last year. Um, so there'll be newer equipment. Uh, things will be replaced that may, may not have been replaced. Um, and they have a greater emphasis on training. Um, so there'll be a lot more training of the of the staff, uh, you know. With a, you know, with part of that's going to be alcohol training as well, uh, just to keep everybody up to date. Um, the uh, manager is, as he said, is general manager here uh, already. Um, he was formerly the general manager in uh, Saugus, uh, and he was the manager of record there. So he's been approved before. He had no violations there. Um, he is the uh, serve safe certified. Uh, he did talk with Betty recently. Um, he's going to come down and visit her this week as well. Um, just to make sure he has all the local requirements, uh, you know, in hand and, and he understands those, uh, which I was explaining to a little bit to him. Um, and uh, but generally, uh, it's going to be uh, run the same way. And and, uh, and you know, Josh is looking forward and he can answer any questions you have. All right, thank you. So I'm going to ask real quick. So there's no change of the signs out front. There's no change of no. the napkins and the logos and the nothing. All that's really changing is the paycheck stub that says Buffalo Wild Wings to, what was the other name? Blaze and Wings. Blaze and Wings. Blaze and Wings. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the only. They have a franchise agreement that it's probably this thick that lays out all the things that you have to do because they want it to present to the world that it's it's the same, you know, brand across the country so okay you know same menu same all right so gentlemen um we'll start with mr priest now. any questions uh just to, randomly you, you mentioned there'd be a, equipment upgrades if it's necessary i mean so I, I was just in danvers last week and the uh the uh manager there had said 
you know, I've got some, some slightly older equipment and I've already had people from the national company and saying, you know what, we're just going to replace it. So he, he, he was mentioning that as a, as, as a positive uh, result. Gotcha. Okay. So not, 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 right. not definitely. Sure. All right. Thank you. Michael? No, no sir. No. Jim? Good. Okay. Seeing there's no questions, I will open public. it up for the public. I get better, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, a year later, I'm almost learning. Uh, at this point, I'd like to open it up to the public. If anybody has uh, positive or negative to say about this, please step forward. See there being none. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Pence? Go. So, 4 0, Ben. Or one, whatever you want to call it. Hold on. Thank you. Well, that was only a motion to close the public hearing. Oh. We haven't voted on, we haven't voted on your issue yet. I wasn't. <laughs> you can't get out of here that quick. <laughs> All right. Now I need a motion on um, Article 299. <coughs> Anybody? Motion to approve the all alcohol license transfer from BW Burlington LLC doing business as Buffalo Wild Wings to Blazing Wings Incorporated doing business as Buffalo, Buffalo Wild Wings, 15 South Avenue. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Opposed? 4-0, uh, Betty. And then um, tomorrow, the Deputy Local Electricity Authority will approve you after you receive the other paperwork that we talked about. That'll be done tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just looking for, uh, did you send the email yet? Or? Yes. Okay. Right. Go meet you in the hall. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good Gentlemen, you're all set now. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Segarino, excuse me. Tonight we have a request from DPW Director John Sanchez uh, for the board to authorize an additional five hundred thousand for the snow removal budget. Uh, town meeting provides us with three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the town budget for this purpose. <clears throat> we are just about through that allotment year to date. Uh, the law allows the board to authorize additional amounts for this purpose above and beyond. Uh, we typically spend closer to 800000 annually for snow removal. Uh, since we do this every year, I would like everyone to know that we've already accounted for this $500,000 in our budget process. Uh, any unspent funds that you authorize tonight will return to the general fund at the end of the year. Thank you, sir. So this is something we go through every year and every year. Uh, after this meeting's over, we probably all will get a couple of questions on how did we spend that much money so fast? So um, between the sand, the salt, the snow that we did have, $350,000 doesn't go very far in today's society, right? That's correct, Basically. Mr. Chairman. Uh, some of the uh, old municipal finance laws um, sort of encourage you to keep the original snow and ice budget low. There's a variety of different reasons to do so. Um, so our typical expenditure is closer to 800, 850,000 a year on snow and ice, and you know we take full account for that as we're preparing the budget. So we've already accounted for the 500,000 in our budget planning, and again, if if, if um, knock on wood, if we continue to have um, low uh, precipitation, then uh, those funds will be returned to the general fund. So thank you, sir. That was a great explanation of it, uh, gentlemen. Are there any questions on this? <coughs> Yes, Jim. Um, Mr. Zagarino, uh, just for public awareness as well, I'm assuming, uh, I know we haven't had a lot of snow per se, but there are times when, for example, unfortunately that house fire or a water break during the winter, all that stuff, uh, those lead to slick roads as well. And if you have rain and then a freeze, it's not so much snow, but it's ice. And that's what's one of the dangers on the roadway. So this is not, you don't need a blizzard to plow. So in other words, the sand is out there and salt is out there for times other than a snowstorm. So a lot of people may not be aware of that, but um, th that material has to come from somewhere. So it does have to come from salt and, and, yep. and sand. And, and the other thing I've learned over the years, uh, Select Mintigas, is that, you know, oftentimes it's, the duration of the storm, uh, when the storm occurs, does it occur during the normal work day or on the weekend? Um, and again, I know Mr. Sanchez has said he'd rather get hit with 
12 inches in two hours rather than 12 inches spread out over 10 hours because we constantly have to 10 hour long as opposed to it all coming down at once and cleaning it up once. So those are some of the things where, you know, I feel fortunate that it hasn't snowed that much this year, but again, um, there are a variety of different reasons that drive the cost, um, not just the total amount of inches. So, <clears throat> thank you, Michael. Uh, no. Mr. Priest, no thanks. Okay, not a public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve uh, item number three hundred, snow and ice deficit authorization. Motion made. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Opposed? Thank you, Betty. Uh, 301. Uh, item 301. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, next, I would like to ask the board to accept a couple of donations. Uh, we're very fortunate uh, to have so many generous residents and businesses in town, and I want to start acknowledging them, as many of them as possible, here at your meetings. Um, we always send a thank you, but I think it's sometimes it's worthwhile to thank folks publicly. Uh, so tonight I'm going to ask for a board vote to accept the following donations to the Sculpture Park Committee, uh, understanding that we don't necessarily know where the sculptures will be located at this point, uh, but I would like to acknowledge um, the two donations we've received thus far, uh, $10,000 from the Nordblum uh, Corporation. And, oh, let me just check on that. Yep. 10,000 from the Nordblum Corporation and uh, 2,500 from Reamer and Bronstein uh, attorneys. So we'd like to thank them publicly for those donations. And, um, you know, in many communities, they'll have the board vote uh, to accept those donations. And again, I think it's um, worthwhile to give thanks because um, we, we, we receive so many uh, generous donations that I, I feel like sometimes we lose sight of the fact of how generous uh, our community is to, to the town. So. I'd like to start doing this on a more frequent, Absolutely. regular basis. Absolutely, I think it's uh, I think it's a great tribute to the town. It's like the veterans we just had in here. Mm -hmm. No one knows that they do that. No one, no one would have ever known that they, they donated ten thousand dollars to a sculpture park and twenty five hundred dollars to a sculpture park. That's a that's a huge chunk of change in my world. Yep. You know, so yes, absolutely, keep going with that. Uh, now that I said that, gentlemen, anything, Jim? Uh, I'll make a motion. I, I got nothing to say, but okay. Anything, anything you'd like no, to I say? No, no, no. I just also want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Buckley for being a part of the Sculpture Park Committee, um, and you know, being a voice for the businesses um, in that space. He's been a great asset to the to the committee. That's one of the things I think we take advantage of the fact that we knew he was on the committee, but they don't. <laughs> it's one of those. And also, right. yeah, yeah, Mr. Buckley is on the committee, so it's fantastic. Kudos to him, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. We we'll have a motion on this. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and make the motion um, that we accept uh, with immense gratitude um, the twenty five hundred dollars <coughs> from Reamer and Bronstein and the ten thousand from uh, Nor Bloom for the sculpture park. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. Ready. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item number three hundred two. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next up. Uh, is the final step we need to complete an action voted at town meeting a couple weeks ago. As the board is aware, several months ago we had a family in town attempt to sell their property uh, and discovered from a title search that the town of Burlington was the owner of their home, which they had paid taxes on for years. Uh, town council was able to trace the paperwork problem back many years ago uh, to when the town received some conservation land that became the Marion Road Conservation Area. Uh, town meeting voted to allow this action, <clears throat> and I apologize, it's a very long motion, and I would ask that it be read very carefully uh, so that these residents can get on with their lives. So I know that they have a closing schedule for February, and again, it's, um, it's a unique situation, uh, but it did uh, very negatively impact two families in town that were trying to make a move, and uh, we're hope very hopeful and thankful that we're able to uh, get this thing resolved uh, as quickly as possible. So uh, if I can ask uh, Nick to please read the... Everybody buckle up. I, 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 the, key, the key was it was, it was very long, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sit down, we're going to grab coffee, enjoy. <laughs> All right. Uh, so pursuant to Article 14 of the January 27th, 2020 town meeting, I move to that the Board of uh, Selectmen release and otherwise transfer any right title 
and interest the town of Burlington may have in a certain parcel of land together with the buildings thereon situate in Burlington, Middlesex County, Massachusetts, and being shown as lot one of a plan of land entitled Haven Meadow, Raymond Engineering Services dated October 1st, 1984, and recorded in the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds as plan number 296 of 1009, uh, 1985 in book 16060, page 164, and bounded and described as follows. Southerly, by Bedford Street, 60, uh, 76 and 71 over 100, 76.71 feet. I guess I'm, I'm just, now I'm just supposing. Um, Westerly by land of Timothy J. and Veronica M. Sullivan by three courses measuring 54 and 65 one hundredths, 54.65 feet, 65 and 91 one hundredths, 65.91 feet, and 76 and, uh, and 78 one hundredths, 76.78 feet, respectively. Northerly uh, by lot two on said plan, 114 and 7 one hundredths, 114.07 feet. Easterly by McCarthy Drive by two courses measuring 56 and 4 one hundredths, 56.04 feet, and 135 and 61 uh, one hundredths, or 135.06 feet, respectively. And southeasterly by the curved junction of McCarthy Drive and Bedford Street, as shown on said plan 40 and 22 one hundredths, uh, 40.22 feet, uh, containing 20,450 square feet of land according to said plan, and further releases uh, at any and all rights it may have in a parcel of land described as parcel one on that deed dated December 18th, 2002, and recorded in book 37433, page one, uh, one uh, I'm sorry, 516, at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds, described as lot number three on a plan entitled Plan of Land Belonging to Estate of Otis Haven, located in Burlington, Mass., <coughs> Dated September 30th, 1929, uh, H.S. Condon Surveyor, and that uh, the chair shall be authorized to execute any and all documents to effectuate this transaction. I'm, so sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Nick, can you repeat that, please? <laughs> from the top, you want to take it from the top? I was going to ask for a five minute recess. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Wow. And, I, and I don't mean to laugh because obviously this has affected two families here in town. It's just, I think, the general absurdity of it all. <laughs> I'll second that if no one else has done so. A motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed against? Four zero, what do you call them, absent? Four zero. Four zero, zero. zero, zero. Nick, thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. I won't let you do any more tonight. <laughs> You're all set. There aren't any more in <laughs> Son of a gun. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a quick one here. Uh, I'm just um, I'm interested in, in receiving some feedback for the Historical Commission space needs. Uh, we re recently worked with them to provide accessibility at the museum. Uh, they have an interest in some type of storage shed up at the West School. Uh, we're also renting a storage trailer uh, for some of these items up at Overlook Park. Uh, I am requesting a volunteer from the board I also request one from Ways and Means as well as Capital Budget Committee and I'm hopeful that this group uh, will be able to provide us with some options about the best way to proceed, uh, what type of structure works best as well as where's the ideal location, uh, what types of items we have in storage, etc. And again, this would be a, a committee that advise, advisory to me and um, I'm just looking for a volunteer for the board for this purpose. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm, I'm not liaison. Okay, yep. so, there you go. Somewhat familiar with their conundrum there. Settles that. There you go. Thank you, Mike. Next up, we have our departmental budgets uh, for the board to okay. uh, ask uh, Budget Director Whitney Haskell to come on up. And I'm not sure who the first victim is, but... <laughs> I really want to this. Hi, everyone. Um, I did want to ask if it's possible if we could take them kind of out of the order of the way that they're printed so that everybody sitting here can go because Paul and I have to be here anyway. Um, what would you like to do? Take them out of order? Take them out of the order that they're printed so that these Absolutely. guys Absolutely. Whatever you want to do, Whitney. Everything you do for us, 
We can do that. So I just wanted to give a, a quick introduction before we, we break into the specific budgets. Um, just as a quick reminder, after several meetings, the general consensus was that the guidelines should be about uh, 3.5 blended between town and school department. This typically means that the town side comes in about 3.25, so the school can come in about 3.75. So what you'll see before you tonight is a group of the town departments that are all coming in on target of um, 3.25. And we're also still working to finalize the accommodated accounts. Uh, you'll see a few of those in the central admin budget tonight. These may be adjusted as additional information comes in, but based on what we know so far, those also look to be coming in on target of around 6.5%. Oh, and one, one more thing uh, relating to salaries. We have a number of contracts that are settled. So the BMEA, DPW, and Police Command are settled for FY21. So those rates will be accurately ref reflected in each department's budget. But the AMP, Police Patrol, and Fire are not. So those are based on the FY20 rates. And then as those contracts settle over the course of the year, that money would be transferred out of negotiated settlements. Thanks, Whitney. And I guess we'll start with John. Are you ready? So John is here representing conservation. He's level funded his expense and special lines. Um, his full-time salary has increased due to two employees moving through steps and his part-time line has decreased slightly due to the onboarding of a new recording secretary who will be um, coming in at a slightly lower rate than the previous recording secretary. And John's here to answer any questions that you may have. Um, yeah, matter of fact, um, can you go over a little bit about this train cleaning? Uh, what it covers to request uh, the operating budget as opposed to when uh, requests are made for warrant article, the difference between the two. Okay, sure. So the, um, the conservation stream cleaning line item is for hand stream cleaning. So we hire summer help and they just walk the streams removing branches and, and dams and, and trash and that sort of thing. The warrant article is a DPW funded position and that's actually for removing sediment and sand with the vector. So we, we coordinate, we frequently will go and hand stream clean first so that the vector, you know, doesn't have to, they don't have to climb over limbs and branches and whatnot. But they're, they're t two, two separate programs, two different Give departments. Give me a rough idea, how many streams do we really have in town that get to both of them, whether the vector or the hand cleaning? So the vector, they usually just have one, one segment of a stream per year, um, and there's probably five or six or seven that they've done over the years, over the last 15 or 20 years. The stream cleaning, um, there are dozens and dozens. There's lots of basically stormwater ditches that get obstructed. So there's some that we clean every single year. There's some that we probably go to every five years. Um, and there's some that we just go to when we get requests from residents because there's some sort of blockage or something. Uh, but basically, we do them all with the, with the exception of Vinebrook. We don't touch Vinebrook. It's really primarily um, a program for cleaning the streams in the residential neighborhoods to help alleviate flooding in the residential areas. Vinebrook's in the commercial area, and plus it's really too deep to send kids into anyway. I've been asked questions about how many, how many streams do we really have in town, five, and I was like, a lot. We I didn't do. know yeah. how I mean, many there roughly were. So there's dozens and there dozens, dozens of small of streams in town. Streams. And you mentioned something about cleaning dams. Is uh, Do we have a beaver problem in town or is um, there? I wouldn't say we have a beaver problem. We do occasionally get beavers in town. Um, if they if they cause a problem, they're, they're generally removed by, uh, by the, well, the Board of Health approves the DPW trapper to remove them. Okay. But I, it's just occasional. It's, right. not, it's not a regular problem. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. What is that? Anybody else? No? Okay. You're good. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Much. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Oh, do you have to do they vote it? Thank you, bring up. So um, salaries are the major driver to Marge's budget. 
much of the salary increase for FY21 is due to the movement of a part-time outreach worker to full-time. Um, this change occurred during the course of the current fiscal year, but is reflected in the budget for <coughs> FY20. Um, the movement of that position also impacts the amount offset by the state formula grant. Uh, beyond that, we have the typical adjustments for employees moving through steps in longevity. Um, you also see that the expense budget decreased significantly in response to a significant increase last year in FY20, which uh, we did because there was uncertainty of receiving a grant that was relied on for funding for outreach workers. And Marge is here to answer any questions. Thank you. Gentlemen? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. If yes. Um, Marge, can you walk me through, walk us through, um, how the, how the how your staff a lot like who's full time who's part time who's covered by grants how's it all working and are you properly staffed for the incoming influx of seniors <laughs> no 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I was I was trying to put together something that told me you know to kind of say what everybody was under and I actually got myself confused <laughs> um, so I have um, well, let me start at one end of the building and move to the other. So I have um, a full-time um, administrative assistant, who's awesome, by the way, and she's paid for through the town. I have two front desk clerks who job share, and they are partially paid for through the town and partially paid for through uh, the formula grant from the state. Um, both <coughs> of my um, weekday van drivers, um, one is 30 hours, one is 20, and they are paid through for through the town. My weekend drivers are every other Saturday and they are paid for through the formula grant. Um, I have two full-time outreach workers who are social workers and they are paid for now through the town. I have a part-time 19-hour um, outreach worker who was paid for through the Cummings grant. We've used, we're using that up and using town funds for that and I've reapplied for the Cummings grant, and I will find out in May um, whether or not I received that. Um, and I think that's it. There's a, yeah, I think that's it. And then, of course, yeah. myself, I'm through the town. Right. Um, for staffing, they're, my, we're, all, we're busy. We're, we're really, really busy. And I, um, I'm trying to do all of my director position responsibilities and do activities at the same time and that gets um, that can get very overwhelming um, and I tend to back off of activities when it gets too busy um, just because I can't handle doing everything at once um, I do have a volunteer who is amazing and has stepped up and is helping with a lot of activities Rose Magliosi um, but she is fully 100% volunteer right so you have one volunteer I have many volunteers okay. <laughs> No, I have many, many. Okay. Um, but she's the one that's really kind of becoming my right hand and trying to make sure that activities um, happen. And she, she's got a great imagination and comes up with all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And do you have a good read on, like, I know that we've been talking about this for over a year now, um, the exponential growth in terms of, you know, baby boomers now hitting senior age. Do we have an idea of, like, how many over the next year or two we're going to see it in terms of Burlington's growth in terms of seniors? We're actually growing about a rate of two to 300 a year um, coming into the um, aging in. To two the, to 300. Two to 300 a year. <coughs> We're, um, when I, I asked Amy last, um, actually, I asked, I asked, not even Amy, we have, a, we have the census as well. And when I looked, it was 6,600 as of like last week. And, and I swear and, yesterday it was six, the day before it was six thousand. <laughs> right, and and given all that, you you feel as though you could probably still do with what one two more staffers. Yeah, I mean we don't really have room to put them, but we have, we're going to have to find somewhere at some point to to put them because we are yeah we're not going to survive the whole wave with that with what we have. Sure, and and wish list. Who, what would those roles? Would they be more outreach workers? I would do one more outreach worker and one more, and then an activity person. Activity, like, like yeah, coordinator of some sorts? You know, the activities of all these and parties seem frivolous um, to an outsider, but you get people to come in, they, get, they learn to trust us, and so when they have issues, they, 
will come um, to us, hopefully. But also, it gives us a chance to eyeball people. You know, are people not doing well? Do, do they, are they having issues? Are they not bathing? Are they looking really pale? Are they starting to look too thin? Um, all of that stuff is, is things we can eyeball as people come in. Um, and not that we're going to see everybody, but we do see quite a large percentage of seniors coming in. And that ability to kind of keep an eye on people as they go through the aging process is huge. Yeah. Um, last question. Um, is there an average age for the seniors who partake in the Council on Aging? Like, is it like after like, at like 75, it kicks it? Like, is it? It is, around, it is in the 70s. Yeah. Um, each town seems to be a little bit different. Um, I think that has a lot to do with socioeconomic class, you know, when people stop working. Um, do they have enough money to do what they want to do until they can't do it anymore? Yeah. Golfing is extremely expensive. Um, but people start coming in at 60, and we do have some programs for 55 and over, and we, do, we definitely get folks in that age range. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? No? And then being done? Thank you, Maj. Thank you. So next we have uh, Youth and Family Services, the uh, expense budget is level funded, the salary increase is mostly step changes, and the department is largely made up of A&P employees, so that contract not settled yet for FY21. Great. Christine, is, Thank there, you. is there any questions? Gentlemen, do we have any questions at all? Right now. Sagarino. Uh, Christine, I know uh, Senator Friedman mentioned um, um, the, the low pay uh, for, for social workers. Mm -hmm. um, are we, are we paying at an appropriate level to attract the qualified candidates um, that we need um, to properly service our residents? Just Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the piece around the insurance reimbursement piece that they're talking about is a different structure than what gets paid through the town. So in general, I think um, the pay salary is a decent pay salary. I do have a question in terms of, I know Marge has social workers at um, bachelor's level and whether or not there's a different structure. That would be the only question I have. If I knew that, I could then answer you and say a yes or no. Well, we'd be, we'd be happy to work through that with you okay. uh, when you have the information. Great. But overall, there is one other issue with the state that um, I would have loved to have spoken to her about and I may actually reach out to her. But one of the reasons why it's really hard to get people to join the panels is what the insurance companies have changed is if there is something, if you do something in error in the work treatment work that you're doing, you are then required to pay back everything that has been paid to you. So there are so many levels that, that get in the way of people doing um, third party reimbursement. So that's where people then say, I'm just doing it, people pay me out of pocket. So there's a lot of complications to that system, if you would, overall. Any other questions? I do a qu quick comment. That's all. Christine, I, I just want to thank you and your staff for all you do. It's kind of like a, the unknown department in town because people don't know you unless they need you. Mm -hmm. But uh, the amount of the, the volume and the quality of the work that you and your staff does is just, uh, it, it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a quick question. Not so much a question. I mean, sorry, I don't mean to keep you here later than, no, no. than you need to be. Please. Um, in an ideal world, mm -hmm. what's the next thing that you'd want to see for your department? For my department, what would I like to see? Um, in an ideal world, yeah. an, an additional um, clinician. Yeah. Um, part, of the, part of that position I would like to see as um, prevention work um, in the department. I think that having somebody who can devote a certain number of hours to that kind of work would be awesome. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Um, sorry, just one more random question. I apologize. Um, I know that um, every year when you come to town meeting, um, again, because they are an unknown department, I think everyone kind of questions what it is Youth and Family Services does. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess twofold. One, can you take a hot second and explain what it is the department, what purpose the department serves, because I think it's important. And then two, the, the question that I was getting to is, um, there was talk of um, like 
paid fee for service? Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. uh, has there been any movement on that? Do we know where things stand with that? You talking about third party, uh, the insurance reimbursement piece of things? When you say is, is is that what it is? Yeah, because there, the there was talk about like having like a doc it was brought up at town meeting. Yeah. And, um, when we go back this year, I'm hoping to be able to address all of the okay. questions and have some sort of a study done that that will either say here's why we can move in that direction or here's why we can't move in that direction. Excellent. Um, but to speak in terms of what our, my department does, I'm going to start off with what don't we do. Um, <laughs> just so people know that if somebody calls and has a question about anything that no other department can answer, it comes to my department. My staff are very de dedicated, and even if it has nothing to do with what we what we do, they will do research and try to point somebody in a direction to get their needs met. Because none of us like to, if somebody needs help with something, nothing worse than saying there's nothing I can do. So we do what we can to try to connect people to resources. Um, the majority of the work that we do is counseling. It's adolescent family counseling. We all, any, all of us that have had ad adolescents know that that is not necessarily an easy time to get through. Um, but it is a great time to, for uh, families to be able to come in and have a resource to really help them navigate that time in their child's life and to be able to sort out what is typical teen depression and what is something that's more serious than that. Um, we're trained in, in uh, family therapy, so the, our primary focus is to try to work with as many family members as possible. Certainly half of our cases are family, the other half are um, individual, uh, some couple stuff, and also the group program that we um, offer. Um, I talked to the conservation people because uh, the Na NIPM, the National Youth Project Using Mini Bikes, has been in existence in this community for 38, 39 years, something like that. And um, we may lose our riding site, so um, with the changes that they're going to be making there. But that's a fabulous program for kids in this community. Most of the kids that get involved in that program are kids that you would not see walking through the doors of a counselor's office because. They just wouldn't, but you engage kids, teach them how to ride a dirt bike, and they earn their riding time And um, based on the contract that they've done. It's also an opportunity for clinicians to be able to address stuff that goes on with a kid in real time. If they're having a hard time getting along with somebody, we get to intervene and facilitate something that helps kids learn different skills in terms of how to relate to one another, how to manage their uh, frustration, their impulse control, those kinds of things. So it's a great, it's a great program. Um, so, uh, we work with the schools as well in terms of uh, we do assessments for the schools and uh, actually are doing some counseling up at the schools at the present time. And then for any resident in the community, we, are the, we oversee um, different social service funds. So we do what we call the basic needs. Um, People Help People has resources, Salvation Army has resources, um, Help Ease has resources, and uh, we basically will meet with a family who's in some kind of financial difficulty look at the big picture and see where we can connect them with resources. Um, the other piece that we've, um, that I started this past year was uh, what we call ourselves the community response team and that's where different department heads, so we have council on aging, police, fire, um, the mental health clinician that's with the police station, um, I'm trying to think of who I'm missing, board of health and um, actually getting the nurses in the schools involved to whatever kinds of things that are going on for people in the community sharing resources and again streamlining stuff so that people can get their needs met and get the needs met as quickly as possible so awesome. here's a little nutshell if you would yeah what we no, do. i appreciate that and now anyone who's watching or who will watch yep. uh will know thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Chairman. appreciate it all set mr chairman at yes, some sir. point um I've, I've talked to christine about possibly um being able to invite a selectman to the community response meetings um I have to tell you, in my one year here as town administrator, I've never been so proud of the community uh, for what go, what that Christine and her team does with fire, uh, someone from fire, police, uh, COA, uh, Board of Health, um, just really seeing what they do to help some of our community members that are in distress. It's, it's really, it's heartwarming. And I have to tell you, I've, I've never been so proud as uh, when I attend those meetings to see what we're doing for people, you know, who are going through a really difficult time. So I got in discussions through it, Christine, to see how we can sort of get uh, you guys down there just to sort of experience it. And I think it would be definitely worthwhile for, for you each to try that out at some point. Absolutely. I would love to do that. Great. Absolutely. We'll work that out. That'd be great for us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So next up we have fire. Yes. 
Um, there are a number of changes in the fire department this year. We have our newly appointed fire chief who's going through his first budget season. Uh, we have the long awaited implementation of the ALS ambulance service, which plays a role in the budget request that you'll see for you tonight for FY21. Uh, we got fire station two up and running with just punch list items remaining. Um, so you'll see the sal salary line here for um, the firefighter personnel is based on the FY20 rates, uh, as the 21 rates have not been set yet. Um, the expenses and special accounts are level funded with the exception of an increase in materials and supplies, which is related to the ALS implementation. And Chief Patterson is here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, Jimmy, Chairman, uh, Chief, I noticed that there's been a cut made between the department's request for overtime and the super supervisory approved amount. Can you give us an explanation on that? Sure. Um, as Whitney uh, was just speaking, uh, this is my first time uh, uh, putting together or uh, uh, assisting with putting a budget together. So, um, in consultation with both Whitney and John, um, we came up with an initial number or an initial request as far as overtime goes. Um, quite honestly, this current fiscal year has been a terrible year for us. Um, we've had a number of uh, injuries, long-term injuries. Uh, we've had 12 personnel out with serious injuries or illnesses. Um, so. Uh, what we did or what I did is I looked at our current fiscal year um, and uh, kind of projected that going forward where this may go um, into the next fiscal year. So um, that's basically, I recommended a number and then in discussions with, with Whitney and John, uh, we were able to come up with a more, um, uh, a more accurate number. So you can see where the difference was. Yeah, essentially, we try, to, um, we try to look at the budget from a standpoint of how many injuries we typically have during a year as opposed to what we've had on a really horrible year. Yeah. So that, was, that, that, that made up a large chunk of it. The, you know, the other thing, too, is we've had some vacancies in our department that we currently try to, try to fill, and that does have an impact on our department over time. Um, we're, we're taking steps to try to uh, get our staffing up to where it needs to be, um, but it's a, it's a process. It's a lengthy process. So between uh, injuries and vacancies, um, that accounted for that initial high number. You know, I, I can't predict, but we, we certainly don't think, we certainly hoping we don't have that kind of injury uh, bug that hit us this current fiscal year That's going into the next fiscal year. And then once, once, we, once we fill vacancies, that certainly will help our uh, overtime as well. I'm just assuming this, this, uh, it, there's a correlation between the amount of uh, firefighters that are out, because you've had a busy year, a very yeah. busy year. Some out of the ordinary events have taken place, um, you know, once in a career types of, of, of incidents. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's the correlation that we've... A lot of incidents, incidents that we don't normally see, um, and we're only human, and people, humans get hurt. I mean, it, it really comes down to staffing. Um, like I said, our vacancies have a direct impact on our overtime, um, which we're trying to trying to address at this at this here at this point. So, what's that? Yes. Any other questions? No, thank you. No. Paul, anything? Did promotions have a big part of this, too? Excuse me? Promotions have a big part of this? What all the promotions that would into the... I mean, you got to average all that in, right? The budget sure. and yep. promotions. And so, um, so we believe, actually, the, uh, all these recent promotions will actually have a positive impact on our fire department over time. Right. Uh, God, I hope so, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. I was glad. <laughs> I just wanted people to hear that. There's a positive impact later on for us, you know. But no, that's the only thing I had. I was just wanted to get that out there because I, sure. I discussed it with um, another person and 
So that should be um, good for us later on with all that. With all that. Absolutely. And people are with the ASL, which is going to help us out. That's a huge for us in town. Um, if that saves uh, one person, it was well worth every penny of it. So, great job, great job on your first one. First one by yourself. I'm sure you had help from. Well, like I said, I mean, uh, it's kind a kind of, of a team concept. Uh, you know, um, Stacy and Laurie, uh, Lorreen at the fire department, Whitney and John. And Paul from the town side helped kind of guide me through this. So I appreciate their. It's their always hard the first one. Now it's over with. Now you can move right along and get the second one done next year. <laughs> Chief, the second one, I can start asking for more stuff. They can. <laughs> can. Chief, can you just give the board a quick update on the ALS? I know our application is in sure. the state, so it's really. Yeah, it's so really, we're really kind of um, standing by waiting for um, <coughs> the, uh, <coughs> the inspector to come out. Um, and inspect our ambulance, um, like uh, Mr. Sagarino was saying, and probably about three to four weeks ago, uh, we submitted our application into the state. Uh, we've been assigned a, um, an inspector. Uh, we've purchased all the uh, necessary equipment. Um, Lieutenant Sayer and uh, Tom Monagle have done a great job um, getting us ready for this inspection. And then we have the coronavirus strike, uh, and uh, the, you know a lot of the attention on the state side is now being focused on this. So hopefully this is not going to delay us too much. Good. But uh, but we're we're ready for inspection. Excellent, excellent, great job. Thank you. Sure. That's it. We're all set, everybody. Thank you. Thank Chief. you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Whitney. Okay, Whitney. Anything else? Uh, can you do selectmen? Yep. No, we're good. <laughs> uh, so the selectmen budget is going to look a little bit different this year because we've hired the new uh, economic development director during this fiscal year. Um, the original funding was done as a warrant article, so this is the first year that that position actually appears in your budget. And conversely, uh, we've taken the formerly purchasing analyst position that was reclassified at January town meeting to purchasing slash financial analyst. Um, we've now absorbed that into the accounting department. So you'll see that position in the accounting department instead. Um, each expense account you'll see has increased slightly due to various department initiatives and the addition of the economic development function. Um, the percentage increase on those expenses might look a little high, but that's only because the department's expense budget is relatively small in comparison, so any increase looks large. The, the overall budget still falls well below guideline. And I guess Paul or I could answer any questions that... I have no questions at all. Gentlemen, seems to be none. We'll move right along. Okay. Uh, next one we have is the legal budget. Uh, this budget is level funded for FY21. The budget covers uh, the cost of our town council as well as any legal assistance for collective bargaining, cable TV negotiations, and tax title. And again, level funded, same as last year. Okay. Gentlemen, any questions on that one? All good. We're all good. Mr. Sagarino, I think? Okay, next we have central administration. There's two pieces of the central administration budget. Uh, the first part covers central purchasing for townwide office supplies, postage, and multifunction copiers. Um, the second part includes a number of the accommodated accounts, such as unemployment compensation, health insurance, Medicare, OPEB funding, and general town insurance. As I mentioned before, some of those are still being uh, tweak to their final form, but but what you see before you should be relatively in the range of what's what's going to be in the final budget. Right. Thank you, Whitney. Anybody? No. Nope. We're good again. Okay. Uh, next, we have sealer of weights and measures. So we contract with the state to perform our sealer of weights and measures function. Uh, this budget includes half the cost of that contract, and the other half is funded out of the sealer of and measures revolving fund. Um, this also includes a nominal amount for the office supplies um, needed for the billing. This budget is also level funded for FY21. So weights and measures, just to go real quickly, that's 
that's all the gas stations in town. That's all the scales in town. That's all the um, what else is involved? Taxi there? meters. People, people just don't realize it's like. So every time you pull into a gas station, you see that little square on there, and it's got a punch in it that says "Weights and Sales of Burlington Mass." That's so that you're paying two dollars and thirty-seven cents per gallon, and the gas station's not jacking it up in another way. So you're actually getting a gallon of gas for what the cost is. And the other big thing, uh, Mr. Chairman, in our town is uh, they test the scanners, the price scanners in, yep. in the stores. So um, that's so, part of this program as well. Well, I think this is a, a very good thing for the town of Burlington. It's always been there. Um, it, it, it's just a plus for us so that, that, that we have this in there and, and that it's taken care of. Mm -hmm. So just want to let people out there know exactly what weight and, weight and measure it is because I've been asked. That's it. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you. That's all I have. Great job, Whitney. Thank you. Is that it? You can stay there, Whitney. <laughs> That's all right. John, John's sitting in the back having a great time for himself over there. <laughs> do you want me to call? He's just like, this is wonderful. I'll do it's anything. A lot easier so far. Is it better back there, John? <clears throat> I can hear better back there. Make sure I call you in next time before I leave. <laughs> All right. So at this point, uh, subcommittee reports. No, do we have to approve that? Oh, we have to approve this, don't yeah. we? Sorry. You, you can vote those if you like, or we could vote them all at the end, whatever um, whatever the board wishes. All right, so gentlemen, you want to vote them all in at once? Just uh, yep. review um, the 2021 uh, budget review. We'll vote it all in at once. So in terms of voting, like, with youth and family services, do I have to, if we're voting in a lump, like, how do we? I would. Just, just abstain from the whole thing? Uh, so just Mike has abstain to... from that one budget. Okay, so then we should take them in turn. All right. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I make a motion we approve uh, Conservation budget as as presented. Motion has been made. Second. Uh, second. Seconded. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Four zero zero. Mr. Chairman, make a motion we approve fire department as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention, Betty. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the selectman's budget as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Do we all abstain? Yeah. No, we can't. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> All those in uh, favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, may I make a motion we approve the legal budget as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero zero. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the central administration budget as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve sealer of weights and measures budget as presented. Second. Motion remains second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the Council on Aging budget as presented. Second. Motion remains second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the Youth and Family Services budget as presented. Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, second. Second. Yeah. <laughs> motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. One abstention. So at that point, we have everyone. But fire and youth and service family were all four zero zero, and both of the other two, fire and youth and family, were three, uh, and with three, one zero, abstention. One. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're good. Okay. Now, subcommittee reports. Mr. Priest. Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. What do you got for me? Thank you. Um, unlike the rest of this evening, I'll keep this brief. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I get a bridge for sale? <laughs> um, I just want to talk about the Sculpture Park Committee uh, for a quick moment. Uh, we are meeting tomorrow morning uh, to review uh, some of the submissions as well as uh, discuss uh, location alternatives. Um, uh, if you can make that, that'd be great. Uh, tomorrow morning at 7.30. Um, I know. Yeah. Um, so I will, I will fill you in. Um, but otherwise, you know, the, the Sculpture Park Committee is moving forward, um, knowing that we'll figure out a location. And right now they're just trying to whittle down the selections uh, to then come back to us. I believe at our next meeting is what they're aiming for. Um, so we'll expect to probably see them on the agenda for our, our next meeting. Uh, but that's all I have. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Runyon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple notes from uh, uh, on the COA side. 
Um, are you all aware we've been um, running the bingo since the uh, renovations have been completed at the senior center, and it's been one year, believe it or not. Uh, some of you have uh, joined me uh, on bingo day up there, so um, <laughs> this Thursday we're celebrating with a, a, a small pizza party um, uh, ahead of the uh, uh, bingo for the day, and uh, um, I, I represent the selectman's office on, on uh, certain weeks. Uh, Ken Gordon is there. <clears throat> representing uh, uh, his office, Rick Parker from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, his group also participates, as well as uh, uh, Richard Osford and uh, uh, Joe Brown from the um, uh, local media and uh, uh, Marion Ryan from the DA's office. So we've got we've got uh, a number of different folks all chipping in, and and honestly, uh, we all have a, a great time doing so. And again, you have an open invitation to the board anytime you want to come up and. Uh, call some bingo with us so you're, you're free to free to do so so we'll be celebrating that one year um, anniversary this Thursday also um, Erlen construction Erlen construction has been hosting a Valentine's dinner uh, for several years up at the COA Center they do that provide a, a full meal for uh, I don't know a full, a full house that's all I can tell you it's, it's always a solo crowd so I just wanted to uh, that will be this Wednesday, um, and I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, the good people over at Erland Construction. Were, again, we're talking about good corporate neighbors. Uh, certainly, Erland Construction fits that category. So that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tiggs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll uh, be Mr. Hogan's stunt double tonight, as far as the police, because he's not here to rep, uh, give some subcommittee report on that. Uh, a couple of things. One. There's a lot of scams going on out there. Um, you, did, you don't have to pay money to win the Publishers Clearinghouse. Uh, the federal government does not accept iTunes as payment. Uh, and your social security number does not expire. Un unfortunately, the, a lot of the, the victims or the intended victims are the elderly. There's a, a new one that is, uh, being, is targeting the elderly is when they, they're getting a call saying that someone the, you left a note on my car, you damn it, you were hit my car, here's my, your name and number, and uh, so give me, give me a call, and, or they call you, so that's one of the new ones, the newer Excuse ones. Excuse me, may it's, I, it's a fake. would you like me to tell you exactly how it happened? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> but, uh, so there's, there's scams out there, if, if you think it's too good to be true, it probably is a scam. If you have any questions, call the police department. There's a new, new types of scams every day, and the police department will help you, guide you through it. Don't give anybody money you don't know, as far as scams. Um, Canine Havoc uh, will be retiring on February 15th after 10 years of dedicated service. Um, Havoc is fantastic, but our canine handler, Joe Papsadero, is an incredible canine handler. He will be starting, uh, he's actually started with his New dog, Argo, so they'll be patrolling Burlington and, and the area, Nemlik area, and J Joe is unbelievable when it comes to these dogs. He's got a reputation of being an, a, a fantastic canine handler, um, and Havoc has had a distinguished career over his 10 years, but uh, thank you to Havoc, I guess, and thank you to Joe for being there uh, for the residents. And one other thing, I'll just touch upon it briefly because we're going to do a more formal presentation on it uh, at a future meeting is we did receive our green communities designation, so that's a nice one for the town. It'll involve some grant money down the road, but I'll, I'll end it there. Okay. Did Joe also save the owl? Did you tell me? Was that Joe? Oh, yeah. we had <laughs> Joe and, uh, also <laughs> rescued an owl that was stuck in a, a soccer net and... Uh, apparently those things can be pretty nasty. Yes, they can. So can Joe. But <laughs> um, no, but he did. He went above and beyond and, and, and rescued an owl that was stuck in a socket. Mm -hmm. Did, did, local did Wendy Palvacek go and I, I, Diane no, Welch? I think Diane there? went. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So, Jim, does, does Havoc stay with Havoc with will live with Joe, yep, for the remainder of his life. That's great. And uh Argo will, will live with Joe, and believe it or not, those are probably his two smaller dogs. So, That's great. But I'll tell you, it, as a handler, Joe is so well known in, in, yeah. in the area, and he does an incredible job. 
Was that? I'm done. Thank you. Mr. Sangarino, do you have anything? I just wanted to touch upon it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Selectman Tiggis brought it up, but after the long process and with the support of this board, um, with um, various departments and with the support of town meeting, we finally got word from the state that we were accepted into the Green Communities Program. So, um, Mr. Sanchez is on vacation, so we wanted to uh, have him and Rachel in uh, at our next meeting to, to tell us about that. And as, as Jim mentioned, um, the designation grant for entering the program, we're going to receive about $172,000 that we'll be able to use. I believe uh, it's intended to be used to make our buildings more energy efficient. So it's already paying dividends for us. And uh, again, we'll, we'll have a, a more formal update uh, at our next meeting. Fantastic. Thank you. That's it. That's all you have. Okay, so at this point, we I don't see citizens' times on here. So. Do we have a citizen's time? Now, nobody's here, but uh, we're not doing it tonight because there's no one here. Um, we're ready for a motion. Motion to adjourn? Second. Uh, oh, uh, I already did that. Oh, see? Thank you. <laughs> Would you like me to do it again? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Can you adjourn? <laughs> <laughs>